this Thursday night, this cold case live. If any of you are watching Netflix at the moment, you might have seen that there is a series on about the 24 minds of Billy Milligan. He was a guy who became famous for being a serial rapist who was then in and out of mental institutions um, and centered on Ohio for having multiple personalities. Books were written about him. He became a bit of a celebrity. At a later point, he was helped to escape across state lines and went to live in Bellingham in Washington State. While he was there, he started living with a guy called Michael Madden, who went missing in the late 80s, and he has never been found. If you watch the documentary, it's apparent that there is a high likelihood that Billy Milligan killed him. He was cashing his disability checks after he disappeared. So what I wanted to do was actually show you how to do some rapid research using the map that I've shown you before, where all of those unidentified bodies in America are put into one map and use the NAMA system to have a quick pick through and see if we can find any likely unidentified persons who might be linked to that live missing person case that haven't previously been compared just by doing geographical analysis. So I'm going to swap over onto the map now and let's have a look and see what we can see. Here is the map. So if we zoom out, <coughs> we can see all of those unidentified person cases um, for the whole of the US. But what we're interested in is specifically this top corner and we can see Bellingham just here. So what we'll do is stick a push pin in Bellingham just so that we can keep a quick point of reference excuse my spelling, of where everything started. And what we're going to do is have a quick look. Uh, we're just going to have a look at what would be a decent radius from there. And that is going to tell us that it's 175 miles, so a couple hundred miles, a decent drive. And what we're actually going to do is come off measuring and we're going to draw a little circle, I say circle, a polygon is what it's actually called, which takes us around here and isolate that area to give us a bit of a bit of focus. I'm going to avoid the metropolitan Seattle area because that will generally distort and he is thought to have gone to a wilderness area up by some lakes for the day that no one could get a hold of him. What we're going to do is come out of that now, now that we can see this. We're going to start going through these cases and just have a little bit of a look. Now, one of the interesting things, at the same time that Madden disappeared, somebody else had lent Billy a diving kit. And it was returned to him later, but without the weight belt. So there's a bit of a clue there that the weight belt might have been used to weigh down a body. So one of the things that we're going to be looking for is any mention in these cases of a body being found with a weight belt. I'm going to shortcut this a little bit and tell you that as far as I've found so far, there isn't reference to that. And what we're going to do is only look at male remains which have been found. So this is a partial skeleton and a partial pelvis found washed up on the bank of the Columbia River, found in 2013. So in a second, we'll transfer across to Namus, but the first thing I want to do is make sure that we've got this missing person case up, that we can see the photograph, and that we can see what scan details there are of the case. So we're looking for a male, 32 years, five foot nine tall, approximately, who is white Caucasian. We don't know a deal else about him. There's no clothing listed or anything like that. But keep those key facts in mind, as well as the fact that he was last seen on September the 15th, 1986. So this first one, found in 2013 on the banks of a river, skeletal remains. So we will open this one up. 
we know there's going to be no picture with it. Uh, we can't estimate the height. We can't estimate the weight or anything like that. Um, and we know that it's only a pelvis. Has it been compared to anything else? No, so it's never been excluded from anything. So we'll keep that one open. The next one that we're going to look at is this one is this this is a female so we'll eliminate that one straight away this one is a male adult pre-50 partial skeletal remains and found under a worker's cabin on a vineyard that does not seem particularly likely but because of the regional area where it is we're going to open this up check for comparisons and just have a quick look and see what else we can we can have a look at. No great detail. Next one. Check this one here. This is a male found in 2007, partial skeleton, uh, found scattered in the woods near Salton Basin Road. Cause of death has not been determined. So that is a possible. So we'll open that one up. However, with this one, if we look in at the image, it does not seem particularly likely that this is the same person as this. So he's in a bit of basic investigation and comparison. We're going to say, no, not that guy. So we'll eliminate it. Next, this one over at the Pitchfork River. This is a male, partial skeleton with soft tissue found in 1991, found in a period over seven months. So lots of different body parts have come up over a period of time. And this person describes having brown curly hair. So we're going to open this case, which can have a quick look. It's 510. They think the year of death was 1990 to 91, based on the fact there was still flesh on the bones. Um, it's unlikely that this is our guy, so we'll eliminate this one. Now we're going to have a look at this one. Male, pre-70, found in 1977, so actually deceased 10 years before, so definitely not that one. This one is male pre-50 found in 79 definitely not that one this one male found in 2020 near complete skeleton found in a wooded area of south everett now there's not a lot of detail on this check the comparisons and we can see that this one has been compared to an awful lot of cases in fact, two pages worth of cases, but not the chat that we're looking into. So we'll keep this one open just for comparison purposes. And then we'll just move up the map, Mount Vernon, female, discount that one. Move up the map again. This is a, a male who was found in 1989, near complete skeleton, uh, found deceased on Chuckanut Drive, and they actually had a sample of head hair, which was destroyed in 2002. So there's not a lot can be done with that anymore. In the description, and instead of getting you to read the code, we'll just read this here. Firstly, we can see it's never been compared to anything. We can see, so five foot eight male, in the right age range, with an estimated year of death of 88 to 89. So it's kind of in the region, but a little bit, a little bit longer. Um, the destruction of that head hair is really strange. But what we can actually see is that this body had clothing, actually some quite good detail on the clothing. So there were blue colored sunglasses on the ground, a small hairbrush, gray blue long sleeve shirt, jacket, which was on the ground underneath the body, tennis shoes, 
um, and a gold colored Benrus watch. The reason this is frustrating for me at least is because of the lack of detail here, we can't actually tell anything uh, about what he was wearing on the day or if he habitually did wear a watch. So it's very, very, very frustrating. What we can see if we look at the missing persons case, and I'll just point this out, is that comparisons go two ways. This was actually previously compared to a body found in 1990. And if we just have a quick look at that case, um, we can see that there was a facial reconstruction done in it as well, but it was eliminated. So we go back to the map. This one, it's a partial skeleton of a white, white male. I think we've already looked at that one. This one up here, it's a near complete skeleton found. Um, Buried. He had had a bone graft in some part of his body at some point. I'll take a look at this one here. This is interesting because it's near the top of our top of our zone, really. And this is a white male found in. I'll take a look at this one. This is a white male found in 1980. So. That predates the missing person that we're looking for. And this top one, which I missed because I wasn't looking at the map properly, but this is a male found in 2014, mummified in a rural wooded location with no ID on them. Let's take a look at this case and see what we've actually got. There are no images, but they estimate this was a five and a half foot man who died between 98 and 2013. So we can eliminate that one too. So bearing in mind that on this map, there are tens of thousands of cases, missing person cases and unidentified bodies. What we've done really rapidly with a bit of geographical analysis is we've created four possibilities for comparison. And what we're going to do is actually use the contacts on each of these. We can see who the, the regional contacts are um, and we can see which counties are dealing with it. And we're going to refer them to the Madden case and suggest that actually for comparison purposes, it would be a smart thing to do to have a look at the evidence they've got, compare it to Michael Madden because it hasn't previously been done and see where it goes. As with everything, this is the start of a process. There are no quick fixes when you're looking at things like this, but you can see that there are quick processes to accelerate things and check if comparisons have been made. And that's really what I wanted to show you, in particular because this is on Netflix at the moment. It's topical. People will be talking about it. But there's a depth of stuff which can be done when these cases come up, which may, who knows, one day provide the solution to something which has bamboozled people for decades. Thanks ever so much. Have a good evening.